Okay. So this link that you see here, this is the IT fundamentals and this basically teaches you the basics of IT. If you don't have deep knowledge about IT fundamentals um, and you don't really know um, a lot of things about the concepts, you can go into this link and this is CompTIA IT fundamentals um, and uh, this is 37 videos so you can uh, start learning this while we are learning our server 2019 bootcamp um, so now uh, what I will do is I will quickly start um, the introduction about Windows Server 2019 before we start Windows Server 2019 one thing that I would like to do is I would like to um, say is what most of the times right now most of us is using computers right we have computers at home we have computers in office we have computers in anywhere you go so and those computers that we have um, basically they have an operating system right the operating system is installed so basically you see right now I have this start menu I have this taskbar and this is part of my operating system so all computers that we see they actually have uh, operating system installed when it comes to operating system um, operating system comes into two different types for example um, one of them is like end user operating system end user operating system is for example Windows 10 Windows 7 Windows XP they are all uh, end user operating system end user who is end user this person that you see here in this picture he is the user of this computer he is going to use this computer that's why he is called he can be called end user he can be called end user so basically we can call um, call them what call them end user um, so and then we have another operating system which is called server operating system and one is for end user and one is for client so if I come here let me quickly um, draw something here for you so so when it comes to operating system one is called um, for example end user operating system and the other one is server operating system if you remember we did learn about the differences um, of what is server and um, what does server do what is the job of server the job of the server is to provide services so what is the job of server the job of the server is to provide services so what we do with server server provides services right so today if we ask what is this server what is a server we basically can have a lot of different answers for it server is a computer so you see here this this is a server room this is a server room and then in here we have these different racks so these things the black things that you see here they are called racks r-a-c-k racks and then if you see here you may see some servers here installed so server is exactly same as computers the desktops that you have at home or in office but server is a machine server is a machine which is bigger and powerful server is a machine which is bigger and powerful so if I 
show you some pictures here. So if I go to Google and I say Power Edge uh, servers, this is one of the models that we have. So you see, it is a computer. It is a computer. It is like a computer, but but if you see, it is what? It is a computer, but it is bigger, it is powerful, and it is expensive, right? So you see, these are all different servers. It is like a computer. So if someone asks you a question, what is a server? A server is a machine that is powerful and it provides services it provides services right so that is a server that is a server that we use in our daily life when we work somewhere anywhere you go if you go and work in a office they will have a server room like this you see this is like a server room and then they will have servers installed. Why? Because these computers, you see one computer, two, three, four, five. If they want to share files, right? If they want to access files, if they want to access files, they need a server. If they want to send an email, they need a server. If you want to access a website, you need a server, correct? So today, we have, what? We have Google.com. What is Google.com? It is a website. Where is this website? This website is in a web server. You see, web server. So all websites for example google.com gmail hotmail yahoo all of them are web servers so web server provide services what kind of services it allows access to the websites that's how you access websites then we have email server this is email server most of you have gmail.com hotmail.com yahoo.com addresses so who is doing this email routing for example when you send an email from one person to another person right who is doing this sending and receiving how are you sending and receiving emails you are using a email server right you are using an email server so let me quickly show you um, um, hotmail.com data center I will quickly show you uh, something here. So you see, this is Microsoft's data center. This is also Microsoft's data center. Most of you have Hotmail accounts and those accounts are actually where? They are stored in here. So they, these servers that you see, most of you have your emails stored somewhere here so that's how email servers work that's how email servers work all right any questions you have up to here all right so when we talk about um, operating system, um, 
when we talk about operating system we are basically um, talking about two kind of operating systems so one operating system so whenever we have like OS what is OS whenever you work in IT you will hear this term a lot like everyone will say hey what is your OS what is your OS you 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 should know what is OS OS means operating system right and then whenever we talk about operating system we basically um, have how many uh, kind of operating systems we have different kinds of operating systems we have for example end user OS and end user OS let's go back um, to like 19 um, 80, 1990. Um, uh, so basically, let's just start with Windows. Um, um, for example, um, let's start with Windows XP um, and then Windows 7, Windows uh, Vista, um, Windows 8, Windows 10. So these are all end user operating system, end user operating system. So these are called end user operating system because we install it where? Where do we install, where do we usually install these operating systems? Like in what hardware do we install these operating systems? Do you know? we install it in laptops or desktops right so we install it in laptops or desktops so whenever you have a laptop you will have like windows 10 do you know what the operating system is installed in your computer right now windows 10 who doesn't know who doesn't know who doesn't know how to check? So let's just say I ask you, um, hey, can you please tell me what operating system is installed in your computer? How can you tell? How can you how can you do that? Um, who doesn't know? So those who already know, that's good. If you don't know how to when you go to start menu if you type this PC and if you right click on this PC and go to properties so basically it will give you all the information device name this is my computer name this is the installed RAM and this is the processor this is um, um, uh, Windows specification so there are two specifications. This is for hardware. For example, if you have a laptop which is Dell, it will tell you that. And then if you have Windows specification, you see I have Windows 10 Pro. And the version is 20HS and the build is this much. So so basically if you check on your iPhone, right? In iPhone you have iOS and then you have different versions. In your Samsung phone you have a different version of operating system. Same thing here. Now if I ask you, hey can you please tell me what is your operating system? That is how you will do it. And if I ask you, hey what is the RAM installed in your computer? And what is the processor in your computer? This is how you can check. This is how you can check easily. Right? This is how you can check easily. So everyone who uh, actually doesn't know how to do it, need try it once. Okay? So try it once. Try to see the... Um, specifications of your operating system of your device so so you know how to check the name the processor the RAM and what operating system is installed in your computer so this way you will know if you don't know right 
and there is another uh, thing that we can use um, um, it's called um, if you click on uh, start menu and type system information if you click on start menu and type system information system information will also give you all the details so when you go to system information it will give you version operating system and a lot of uh, other details that you need okay so this is how you can check now if I ask you ask you that hey can you please give me the system information about your PC like what operating system is installed what is the name of your computer and what is the processor what is the RAM this is how you do it so you see you have a lot of different details about CD-ROM about display about modem about network about printing about USB basically all hardware and software information about your computer you can have it through the system information correct so this is how you can do it so end user operating systems are what Windows XP 7 Vista and so on now we have other one it's called server operating systems I have already uh, shown you the server how they look like they are big machines powerful and the operating system that you use we were we were using uh, operating system called Windows Server 2000 Windows Server uh, 2003 Windows Server uh, 2008 uh, Windows uh, Server 2012 Windows Server 2016 and today we have Windows Server 2019 so 2019 is the latest server operating system and we are going to learn about server 2019 and Windows 10 so we will be learning about both of them Windows Server 2000, 2003, 2008, they are already expired. They are retired. They are no longer supported by Microsoft. Right? They are no longer supported by Microsoft. Correct? So these are different operating systems that we have. Correct? So this is how um, the server is so this is the server server is to provide services server provide services right they are powerful machines they are powerful machines you see they are powerful machines they are big they are expensive do you know how much is one server do you know how much is one server who knows how much is one server yeah you bought one for 200 it, it depends you bought one 200 uh, because it was used and um, it was um, not the latest model but the servers that you see here they are around $2,500, uh, $2,000 or, or maybe less depending on how much powerful operating system, uh, how much powerful server you want, right? How much powerful server you want. I will teach you how to choose a good server. Again, you see these are different computers. They are connected with server and that's how you access files that's how you access emails if I ask you now um, why do we need server what do you think what why, why do we need server what if we don't have server what do you think what if we don't have server we don't use server and um, we just use computers what do you think Yes. 
So when you want central administration, you want security, that's the time when we need a server. So it provides service. So in most offices, when you go, you have a boss, right? You have a manager, you have a supervisor. So that supervisor is actually leading or is a boss of like all employees, right? So who is that supervisor? That supervisor is a server because he is actually providing services by leading the team, by telling the team what to do, by telling the team how to work, by, by providing information. So, so today you guys are working in office and if you want some information, you are going to your supervisor and asking him, if you want approval, you're going to your supervisor and asking him. So that is how server provides services. So today we, like I said, we have email servers provides email services. We have file server provide file services. We have web server provide web services. Correct. So we have different kind of servers that provides different kind of services and I already did show you this is like a server room and inside server room we have switches we have routers we have servers and so on correct this is explanation so basically you can uh, note it down whenever you see the video server can also be called a responder responder so today, when you have a problem, when you want to access something, you will do what? You will access it through the server. So if I come here and I type google.com, what happened? I am accessing Google. How I am accessing Google? I am accessing it through the Google server. And Google server is responding to my request. That is why server is called a responder. Server is a powerful computer running with server operating system. I have already explained that to you and responding to requests made by clients. Who are the clients? They are the clients. You are the client anyone who is requesting is called a client let me ask you a question can server be a client can server be a client yes because if this is a server and this server wants to access a web page or send an email it can become a client to access the other server at the same time it can be a responder and requester at the same time it can be a responder and requester Server provides various functionalities called such as file sharing, email, print, and much more. Right? A quick overview of history. So if you click on this link, this link will basically take you uh, to uh, the different versions and history. Windows 10, Windows 8.1, Windows 8, 7. Vista, XP, Me, 95, Windows NT. So you see, Windows 1.0, it was made on November 20, 1985. And it was unsupported on December 30th, 2001. So basically, you see all different end users um, operating system with when it was released there are different additions and support status same thing for servers you see if i go down 
we have Windows NT 3.1, 3.5, Windows Server 2003, R2. You see, it is also showing me the uh, start menu for it. I don't know if most of you remember, but you see, that's how that's how Windows 3.1 was. You see, it it was like a folder. That's how it was. If I click on it, it will actually show you all the details about it. So I recommend you all go through this and just uh, you don't have to memorize but look into it so you know what operating systems we had before and their uh, release date and so on. It's very interesting. So that that is one thing. Um, so that that is what the server is correct the next question that comes into mind is how do I buy a perfect hardware for my server let's just say that you have started in a new company right today is your new uh, today is your first day in your job and your uh, manager comes in and says that I need a recommendation from you for a file server and he said that he will install server 2019 so how are you going to purchase a server now so let's just say I come to you and say hey Kawa or Enam or Omed or Zia um, you know what um, I want to buy a file server can you please tell me what hardware is good and do us some do some research for me how are you going to do it now let's see it the very first thing whenever you are buying something let me bring up this website for you whenever you are buying a server building versus buying so how to do it the very first question that you will ask yourself is what what operating system I will install right what is going to be the um, role of the server right is it file server is it email server is it database server what is this server going to do and am I going to install applications in this server what is my budget very important question what is your budget how much money do you have to buy a server now what I will do is your manager said that we want to install server 2019 and it is a file server this thing is unknown we don't know what is your budget your budget is two thousand seven hundred dollars correct let's go and find a server now before I go and find a server I will first go to Google and say server 2019 system requirement all operating systems have a um, system requirement server 2019 requires or like um, recommends or proposed um, four processor cores 16 GB RAM 128 GB um, you can say for OS for operating system and then for data for your data for example your files 512 GB and then 1 GB uh, NIC card or network card there is our simple um, requirement now we have our requirement what I will do is I will come back here and say 
here is the answer so now I have my requirements my manager told me um, or this lab told me use Dell or HP right now if we want to buy a Dell server what you will do is you will simply come to Google and type um, uh, come to browser and type Dell.com once you are in Dell you see you click on products you can buy laptops you can buy desktops you can come here and you have this option called servers and storage there you go what do you need server storage networking or hyperconverged infrastructure so so we need server so we will focus here in here you see shop all servers tower rack rack servers are servers that you install in rack so so let's click here we want to know the prices here you go so it starts from 499 um, but it has two processors um, this is 559 and one processor two processors so so what kind of um, what kind of um, server we are looking for let's let's go with this one let's go with this one so r240 one u um, r715 these are different models okay so these are different models if i click on the first one you can see that how many processors we need four see four processors and uh, once we click there let me go back because it actually changed it um, okay so it is changing it um, let me come here so okay so if I come here um, you can see I have R240 now if I click on build and price so this is the basic price okay this is the starting price starting price but if I want to add more configurations to it I can actually come in here and I can click on customize so what are the default options you can see currently it have 8 GB RAM 1 terabyte hardware 1 year warranty if I click on customize and buy you can see now I can actually change it to different options okay so you can see I want how many cores I want four cores right okay so you see four C four core I have four C here core I3 so I will click here and then what I will do is I will actually go into um, memory so memory is currently 18 um, I will add more so basically how many do I need um, let me go back uh, 16 GB so 2 is enough 8, 8, 8 plus 8 is 16 or I can choose this too so 16 GB and then uh, currently we also want to add some um, hard drive so currently it has one terabyte so one terabyte is enough because uh, that's that's a lot uh, but if you want to add more you can also add more so you see you can even add 12 terabyte it's a lot N operating system you can also add operating system currently no operating system but if you add you will have to pay more you see Windows Server 2019 is how much 766 standard edition essential edition we will learn about editions in details so if I click on here you can see that now I actually um, have it as 967 dollars it's not bad let's let's see uh, the um, networking now so if I go up and try to find the networking memory processor um, everything is there so 
RAID, hard drive, operating system, um, then uh, mm, in here, let's see, power supply. Right now, you see power supply is single cable power supply 250. So what you can do is you can actually add more power supplies if you would like to just to provide redundancy. So if one power supply goes down, you, you have another power supply working. So this is how you can actually uh, do the calculation. Once you are done, you add it to the cart and then simply pay for it. And then if you click on product detail, it will basically give you more information about the server, like the details about the server and how can you use it and everything else. If you click on reviews, it will show you all the reviews about it. Driver manuals and support. If you want to download drivers, you can click on there. So that's how you can basically find a server. Same thing with the HP site. So HP is another company right if you guys have laptop right now at home you it's either most of the time it's either HP or it's uh, um, uh, Dell right so HP they also have servers so if I click here you can see um, I basically have um, shop PCs and then I have like different options here which I can click um, and then I can click on different um, op servers that I may have here. Let me check. Um, okay. HP.com um, business laptops, business desktops, monitor, uh, scanner. Okay, um, let me quickly check why I am not able to see it. Okay, so, so this is the website uh, for server, HPE. I don't know, may, they have, may have changed um, some settings, but I'm not able to see. But same thing you can do here. Like you can come and you can choose what server you want and you can customize it and, and basically um, choose what what operating system you need and so on so but the main point in here was that before you buy a server always make sure what operating system you will install what is the requirement for operating system what rules are you going to install and what is the requirement